All right, guys, as you know, I've been working with nonprofits now for a little over 15 years, writing grants for them, the whole nine, the whole gamut. And one thing that has really been a source of contention for me is the nonprofit not knowing that they needed to assess whether or not they were even grant ready, not knowing how to assess if they're grant ready. And by not assessing if they're grant ready, they ran into so many challenges along the way. So we're going to try to stop that right now. We're going to put a halt to that. And we're going to try to help you to make sure that your nonprofit is ready for some grant funding. The main thing that you have to do is to set the foundation for success. How do you go about doing that? Well, you have to make sure that your mission has been clarified. And I know you're going to say, Shannon, there you go again, talking about the mission. But that's just how important it is. You have to make sure that your mission is not only well-defined, but that it's clear. You don't have to use seven-letter words in order to convey your message, right? Just put it in a way that is easily understood, but at the same time, everyone will know exactly what it is that your nonprofit's mission, what it is that you're setting out to do for the community. The next thing is you have to make sure that you're strengthening your organizational base. What I mean by that is, do you have effective leadership? Are you utilizing your board of directors as you should? Do you have financial stability? All these things come into play that's going to allow a funder to feel confident and to feel secure that you not only know what you're doing, but it's also going to make them confident that you are going to be able to go forward, that you're going to be able to thrive. And after all, that's really what funders are looking for. Are you able to sustain yourself without us? Can you demonstrate impact and outcomes? Do you even know what kind of impact you're having in the community? Are you even engaging your community? You have to be able to communicate the positiveness of your program. You have to be able to show these grant funders, hey, you are not going to be sorry that you're investing in our nonprofit, because this is what we're doing. This is what the community is saying about us. This is the impact that we're having. And you have to be able to do that. So if you're not engaging your community, I think now is going to be a good time for you to start. And you have to be able to collect data. Now, I know that this sounds boring. And, in, and, and maybe it is. But boring it is but necessary it is. How are you gonna even know your impact if you're not collecting data? For instance, if John Doe presented this way and John Doe went through your program for however long John Doe was there, and then at the end of the program, John Doe showed positive results, the actual mission had been accomplished with John Doe, or John Doe went through the program for however long it was, and then at the end of the program, you saw no change in John Doe. So by you being able to collect that data on John Doe, that's gonna let you know if your program is working, if your program isn't working, and what you need to do in either case. Right. So you have to be able to know. I mean, you can't just run your program and not have data being collected as you go. It's, it's, it's just not going to work if you don't. Grant funders are going to want to see some kind of program data that's going to let them know that what you're doing is working. Now, would you give money to something and you didn't know if it was legit? 
if it was actually doing what it said it was going to be doing or are you know are they just supposed to give you the money just because you say that this is what you're doing you say that it's working and you have nothing to demonstrate that it is you know, uh, I know I wouldn't, I work too hard for my money and I'm not just going to give it away. And it's the same thing with grant funders. Yes, they have money to give and yes, they must give it. But at the same time, you have to be able to show that your organization is worthy of that money. You might have an idea to do something so good for the community, so different for the community that nobody else is doing but you have nothing to show that you've done it. So many people say, oh, we've been doing this for so many years. Okay, so show me some data so I can see what it is that you're doing. And there is none. So, you know, food for thought. Now, you have to assess your growth potential. Here's the thing. Grant funders do not want to know, believe, or even think that they are gonna be the only way that you get money into your organization, that without them, your organization won't grow, won't thrive, won't succeed, won't have the doors open, none of that, none of that. So what, what do you have in place that's gonna show these funders, hey, look, even though we do appreciate the money that we're receiving from you, and even though we are just so grateful that you were able to see our vision and, and to you know, link in with us on our vision. But you also have to be able to show them even after you've used those funds and even if you don't get their funds, you can still survive, you can still thrive, you can still push forward. You... So how are you gonna be able to do that? What strategies do you have in place that's going to assure them that you can still make it, that you can still push through, that you can still move forward, whether you get their monies or not? Many of us, you know, are in such desperate situations and it shows in our, uh, our grant applications. So even though you may need the money, you still have to have some kind of strategic plan in place that you're going to be able to show financial stability and that you're going to be able to show sustainability. Another thing is you have to be able to assess whether or not your current resources can accommodate growth expansion. Now I'm going to give you a long word. And I know we just talked about not using long words. What is your infrastructure looking like? That is so important. So your infrastructure, administrative services, administrative processes, record keeping, record reporting, data collecting, making sure that all of your reporting requirements are going to be handled properly. Those annual reports to the Secretary of State, all of that is included in your infrastructure. You have to make sure that your back office is being handled and worked properly and making sure that all of those little small nuances of running a business as well as running a nonprofit are being handled properly. One thing that I do want to bring to everyone's attention is this. When grant funders receive your application, you don't think that they're going to do their due diligence? If you think that, well, I'm about to burst that little bubble. because they are going to do their due diligence. And once they get to the Secretary of State in whatever state you are and see that you are not in good standing, guess what's going to happen to your application? So if you can't even do your annual reports the way that you should, how are you going to be able to do the reporting that they're going to want you to do after they give you the money? So 
please make sure that you're up to date with all of your annual reporting and that you're doing what needs to be done so that you are remaining in compliance with IRS rules and regulations. You don't want to have your 501c3 revoked because of something so simple as not filing a 990. Topic for another day. You then have to show the ability to manage your finances. And I already know, I already know, we don't have finances to manage. <laughs> well, pretend that you do and put some things in place to manage them, right? You have to be able to think, right, of where you want to be and not concentrating so much on where you are be able to show that you can manage finances because even if you don't have any finances to manage and you're doing your fundraising and you're doing your sponsorships and donations and you're trying to get this grant money, you still have to be able to put your best foot forward and, and showing them, letting them know, hey, look, we can handle this money once we get it in because we've got all of these processes in place in order to do that. The main thing also that you're going to have to show is that you have accountability, that everything is above board and your organization is so transparent that you're going to be able to say, we said that we were going to do this with it. This is what we did. We stated that it was only going to be $1,500 to buy this computer, but the computer was on sale. It was only $1,300. So we took that $200 and we put it towards blah, 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 blah within our organization. It went towards more materials for the children. Be transparent and hold yourself accountable. Believe me, it goes a long way. Build a village. Collaborate. Notice I didn't say partner with somebody. Collaborate. Maybe what you have, they need. Or maybe what they have, you need. Collaborate. So that when you are ready to start getting this big money from grant funders, right, you'll be able to say, look, you know, we're doing consultation for this. And then we're going to bring them here. And they're going to be here for 30 days for additional consultation should it be needed. You need to make sure that your village is so tight and so well equipped that these grant funders are going to have no choice but to give you the money. You want to be able to show them that your village is so strong you are going to have the greatest community impact from them giving you this extra money in order to move things forward. So if you don't have a village, you need to start really looking into getting your village together. All right, guys. So in conclusion, <laughs> what I want you guys to do is to be able to always assess your readiness for grant funding. Being prepared will always increase your chances for success. And also being prepared is going to pave the way for you being able to receive more and more funding opportunities. And also make sure that you've got a supportive village that's going to be able to help you see your vision come, come to life. And that's the main thing, right? The nonprofit, regardless of what the mission is, is to do some good in the community, to be able to fill those gaps that are just so widespread that you don't think that it's ever going to be able to close in order to do some good for the community, whether it's for single mothers, whether it's for youth development, whatever it is. So just make sure that you're following it. Um, and also make sure that you give us a call, uh, schedule those consultations with us so that we can talk one-on-one -on -one with you. So that way we can kind of see where you are, kind of help you get to where you need to be, and then give you the instructions that you need in order to get there. Okay. Oh, guys, look, you know, as always, we need you to subscribe, give us that thumbs up, 
to let us know uh, that you like the content of this video. You can leave us a comment. I read all the comments, guys. And also share it. Let others know that we're here. Okay? And look, we want you to get grant funding, but you have to be ready for it. And there's just no two ways about it. All right, guys, you know that we appreciate you so much. And this is Shannon, the Shannon On Demand. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.